Will this be the year that PSG finally win the Champions League? Mauricio Pochetti, no. Now, that's a terrible pun, but I have it in my head. But in this video, I want to talk about Poch. We've got to talk about Poch again. We've got to talk about this man who, for a lot of United fans, not all, absolutely, for some United fans, maybe, he's the right man to take us forward, the right man to come in this summer. But in this video, we need to speak about what happened last night against Real Madrid. Another collapse from PSG. Another collapse under Pochettino. Is he really the man to take us forward? I'm going to run through the pros and cons, run through the reaction to what happened yesterday, and we need to have this discussion again in this video about Poch. Before I do begin, please, ladies and gentlemen, consider subscribing to United People's TV. Go down there, hit that subscribe button, boom, hit that notification bell as well. You won't ever miss a video. But let's talk about Poch, eh? Because last night, it happened again. After a first leg where PSG, uh, you know, Real Madrid went there uh, to, to France, and let's be honest, they didn't exactly play with an attacking mentality. I think it was a consequence of the fact that there was no way goals in the Champions League this year. And then Mbappe popped up. Of course, it was Mbappe. He popped up. 1-0 win for PSG. And they went to the Bernabeu as favourites. And then after the first half, where <laughs> who else scored? Again, Mbappe. One offside and then one onside. 2-0 to PSG, cruising. And a second half collapse where Benzema scored a 17-minute hat-trick. And PSG once again bottled it. Mourinho, Mourinho, well, he did it sometimes. Pochettino, did he bottle it? Or was it a circumstance of it just happened again under PSG? That's what I want to speak about to you with in this video. Lost my, lost my chain of thought there. Because this is far from the first time this has happened on, uh, at PSG under multiple different managers, which I will get into in this video. But what's been the immediate reaction and the immediate fallout to this? This is what uh, Poch actually said after the game. He said, the first goal completely changed the game from Benzema. For an hour, we were better than Real Madrid. The atmosphere changed in the stadium. We made some mistakes, but after that, we can't say we didn't. The worst feeling is that we were the better side, but we lost it in 10 minutes. Well, uh, if you did watch that, though, both, both those times, I'm sure you did. PSG played a lot of good football. Absolutely a lot of good football against a very good Real Madrid team who are currently top of La Liga, if I'm not mistaken. But wow, they utterly collapsed. If we go down and we see what the reaction from some of the uh, the French press has been, this is what uh, Julian Aronza had to say about the game and the, and the reaction to it. He said, we have been here before with PSG too many times. This is a huge failure. A lot is down to the players on the pitch, but you can't make those mistakes. Poch will not be there next season. I can tell you that. Unless they can't get Zinedine Zidane, I don't even think he wants to be there. He wants to be in England. Of course, he's still living... Uh, well, he's living in a hotel. Yeah, he's still living in a hotel. Very Mourinho-esque. And his family is still in London. Very Mourinho-esque as well. But the Poch situation, right? We know what it's been. Like, I've spoken about it quite a few times here on United People's TV. You know I have. We've spoken about it back from the 2016 when he had dinner uh, with Fergie. Or was that... I don't know. Was that... Was that Guardiola, there might have been Guardiola, but anyway, 2016, he was linked with getting the job before Mourinho. He didn't get the job. 2019, when Solskjaer was sacked, he didn't get the job. There are multiple times where he could have got the job and he hasn't got the job. And now he's coming up and being considered by a lot of journalists the number one candidate. And one of those journalists is Jason Burt from The Telegraph. By the way, this is Jason Burt, who's just been named Sports Journalist of the Year from the National Association of Journalists. So again, somebody that we should be listening to. He's saying that Poch faces the sack and will seek to become Manchester United's manager next. Now, this has been the immediate reaction to that game and that result last night. And Jason Burt really has been sort of pushing the Poch to United um, conversation. He's writing that we can't afford to miss out on Poch again, which is not an opinion I personally share. It's not an opinion I think a lot of you share. But this is what Jason Burt's been saying on it. I scroll down and read the article. He said that his future is hanging by a thread after that Champions League defeat. I'll be so surprised if he doesn't get sat for the end of the season. He goes on to say he's, there is an expectation that he will leave PSG at the end of the season. And it certainly means PSG are likely, far less likely to keep Poch for the fact that they collapsed again. But this is something I want to do. I suppose in defense of Poch, right? Because I've maintained and I've stood by the fact that I might be pushing the Ten Hag to United conversation in the same way that Jason Burt might be pushing the Poch to United conversation because I feel it's, it's the right move. I'll explain that in a bit more detail as we go further into the video. All of us, 
expected at some point this season PSG to collapse in the Champions League. History has dictated to us that that is very likely to happen. And it did happen again. Was that entirely Poch's fault? Or was it just the latest example in another, uh, the latest example of PSG just collapsing? Was it 4-0 they won the first leg? Yeah, 4-0 they beat Barcelona in that first leg before they lost 6-1 back in 2017. Of course, United did it to them. They won 2-0 at Old Trafford. What happens? We went and won an away goals. 3 all. They lost the final 1-0 against Bayern. If you look at their Champions League record here, it's just for a club that spent so much money and invested basically to win this trophy only. Just continued failure. 16, 17, last 16, last 16, last 16. Lost the final, lost the semi-final, lost the last 16 again this year. I think as much as Pochettino is certainly going to take responsibility for this latest collapse at PSG, it's very much symptomatic of, uh, of, a, of a club which is not a team. Something which can definitely relate to a Manchester United, right? A, a, a club where there are <laughs> just a roster of expensively accumulated stars that aren't playing as a team, certainly in these bigger moments. Like there, like last night, 1-0 after the first leg, losing 3-1 overall. Barcelona, 4-0 on the first leg, 6-1, 6-5 defeat overall. Beating United 2-0 at Old Trafford, losing 3-1 on aggregate, losing the final. PSG are a club that are just not built to win the Champions League. I absolutely stand by that. But can we say that Pochettino can't take some blame? No, he absolutely has to take some blame for it. I don't know how much blame, and, I, and I, I'm not coming here with this reaction today, with this video saying, look, Poch has collapsed, he's bottled it in the Champions League again, there's no way that United can consider him, he's only going to get sacked by PSG, and United don't want a manager who's sacked by PSG, they go, who are they? You mean like Thomas Tuchel, who was sacked by PSG, went on to win the Champions League in his first season at Chelsea. Being sacked, I mean, Ancelotti was sacked by PSG. Being sacked by PSG is not the measure of a bad manager. PSG is a bit of a poison chalice. I absolutely love to see the fact that their oil money can't get them the trophy that they want. And even in a season when they've got Messi, Neymar and Mbappe as a front three, they still can't do it. I hope you never do it. And I hope City never win the Champions League, but that's far less likely to happen. But look, yeah, I, would, would, would any of us turn, have turned our nose up at Thomas Tuchel? I don't think we would have. And clearly that would have been a wrong decision had we done that. Saying that, does that mean I want Pochettino? No, it does not. I've no doubt that he is a good manager. I've no doubt that he would improve Manchester United, that he would take Manchester United closer to that Premier League title that we haven't got. But I will stand by the fact that there is only one man who should be atop that list. And it's Eric Ten Hag. And of course, you, there are going to be detractors. who say, look, Sam, Ten Hag, what's he done? He's bottled it in the Champions League semi-final against Pochettino in that Spurs team. He's done nothing but manage in the Eredivisie. How do you know that he's going to become and, and be the right man? The fact is, none of us know anything in football. We just have to follow our guts. We have to follow our instincts. We can look at data. We can look at history. And we can make our own determinations about what's coming next and what the right thing to do is. And so far, that's not worked out for Manchester United. I want United to take what I would consider a calculated risk. A calculated gamble. Hell, we took that calculated gamble with Solskjaer, right? Only reason we did that is because we'd already done the, the Fergie recommendation. We'd done the experienced uh, teacher in, in Louis van Gaal. Um, and then we went and got in bed with the devil in Solskjaer. And we're like, no, not Solskjaer, Mourinho. Sorry, sorry, Oli. I'll take that back. And then we're like, what do we do next? Go to Oli. We've got to get the manager who's on the upward curve, man. Five, six, seven years ago, no one was really talking about Tuchel. Six, seven, eight years ago, nobody was really took maybe that, that's a bit harsh, but five, six, seven years ago, Tuchel had his best years ahead of him. Six, seven, eight years ago, Klopp had his best years ahead of him. Liverpool went and got that and benefited from it. Chelsea have now got that and are better benefiting from it. I'm not saying that Tuchel didn't have his career ahead of him before he went Chelsea, but clearly he's a great manager. For me, I want Eric Ten Hag and the upward curve that he's going to experience. Ajax is not going to be what, what Eric Ten Hag is remembered for as a manager when his career is done. His career is going to be remembered for what he does next. 
And I want that to be at Manchester United. And that's why I'm so excited about the idea of it. And why uh, it's not that I'm completely and utterly against the idea of Poch Manchester United. And I've stood by the fact there. I think that if we do go and get him in, I think he will be a good manager. I don't think he'll be a failure at Manchester United. But I compare it to the fact that, look, you can go out and, and get a brand new four focus. It's going to be extremely reliable. It's going to get you from A to B. But if you can go and get a Ferrari for the same price, are you really going to go and get the four focus? Hell no, you're not. You're going to take the Ferrari. I'm not saying that by comparison that Ten Hag is like 10 times the manager of Poch, but it's just an analogy. If you can go out at the same point of getting two things that do the same thing, you're, you're going to go out and get the one that does it better. And that's the way I look at Poch and Ten Hag. I really want to know where you stand on this because clearly this is going to be a debate that keeps going on, but we do need to talk about Mauricio Pochettino and no doubt we'll be talking about Pochettino again down the line. But after that collapse last night, against Real Madrid. Do you think that completely rules? Does that completely rule Poch out for you? For me, I think it's just the latest example of PSG being crap in the Champions League. But it does raise more questions about Poch, about whether he's the right man for United and where your stance lies in him. So let me know what you think about Poch in the comments below, as you always do. Please drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV. Take it easy. <laughs>